On today's beading lesson, I have some ideas for mixing together different fibers to make a multi-strand necklace like this one. And what you're starting out with is a knitted tube. So if you take a look at this piece, it has the purple knitted piece of wire that's running around through the middle, and it's all braided together and connected at the ends using beading cones. But let's start out by using the knitting tool. So what this is, is you maybe remember this from your childhood of the spool knitter, and it's especially designed for using it with wire. So I'm using 28 gauge wire, and you're just going to pass it down through the center of the tool, and you want your end to extend out by about five or six inches. And then you're going to attach it to a weight, and that helps to maintain an even tension while you're working. To attach the weight, it doesn't have to be fancy. You can just twist your wires together and hook it on. Just make sure that it's tight enough that it won't fall off. Then when you're ready to start knitting, you're going to bring it down and across. And the first pass is always going to be the most kind of fussiest pass around the spool knitter, the wire knitting tool. You're going to bring it around and around, and then layer it on top. So you have your two loops, and this is going to start forming the shape of the knitted tube. Now you want to hold it with even tension, but you do have the weight attached to help with that. Pull your bottom loop up with a crochet hook over the top, like that. And you can kind of adjust as you go along, pulling each bottom loop over the top and pull down to adjust as you go. Now, this is going to start to form the top of the tube shape. Now for the second pass, you're going to hold the end of your wire, bring it around over the top, over the top again. You're always crossing in a counterclockwise way around that prong. Now you're going to bring your bottom loop up and over. And you can do this with other gauges of wire, so you don't have to work just with 28 gauge. But this one is an easier one to start with because it's more flexible and it's a little bit more forgiving. You can, and of course it comes in a lot of different colors that you can coordinate with whatever beads you're using. So I'm going to continue all the way around, and you can start to see that it's making a tube. Now, if you wanted to, you could run some beads down through the center of the tube, and that creates a kind of a netted, captured effect. But I'm just going to use this as a basic tube, so we'll continue making our loops all the way around. Now, what it's going to start to look like as it comes out the bottom of the tool is this knitted tube here. And you can Pull this a little bit with your hands, but you don't want to be sure, be sure not to flatten it out too much because we do want to maintain the shape of that tube. Now, when once you've worked it so that you have a long chain like this, then you're ready to remove it. And there's one little tip for removing it. You want to make kind of a long tail here, and then you're going to pass it through the loops on the top of the pattern. So make sure that you capture each of those loops as you go all the way around. We're just going to go around all four, and then we'll be able to cinch it up. Now this tool also is, there is a style that has six prongs so that you could get a heavier looking tube, and it would be a little bit wider if you were going to pass some beads through it. So now I have my ends all stitched up, I'm ready to remove it, and I'm just going to use my crochet hook to remove those from the prongs by pulling that up. And this part isn't going to be beautiful because it's going to be attached inside my beading cone. And then I'm going to remove it from our spool knitter, wire knitting tool. I have one little piece here. It's attached. This part I'm going to trim. I'm just going to make a loop. I'm going to pull this out, and this part all gets twisted together here at the end. I'm going to trim away my extra coil here at the end. I'm going to pass this through the end of my strand. Now this is where my stone beads 
make a really beautiful effect with my crocheted tube, my knitted tube. I'm also going to pass through my fibers and through the last link on the chain. And that's going to capture all of my pieces together. Now I need this wire to be a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to fold it over, pass it through my beading cone, and pull this all the way down over the top of my necklace. Then I'm going to pass this through the end of my chain. And this is going to become my attachment point for the clasp. And here I can hold this with my chain nose pliers and make a double wrapped loop. Get this all fastened together here. And then pulling it tight, I'm going to wrap this around. And then I'm going to start braiding my pieces together. Now this is where you can have some fun with combining some different elements, like the chain, the fibers, and the beads. Looks like I have a little extra piece there. And to get your braid started, what you can do is attach this to a work surface using your T-pin. This is going to hold it down for you while you braid. So now you're ready to start braiding. You want to separate your strands into three, three pieces, basically. So I always do the over, under, method of braiding. And you're just going to do this loosely and you'll continue all the way to the other end of the necklace and then you'll finish the end just like you started with a little bit of wire wrapping and attaching your beading cone. And we're going to take a look at the finished necklace.